In this video, we're gonna go over a couple of things you can avoid, a couple of things you can do that are gonna make you a little bit more of a hot shot in After Effects. So let's get into it. So unless you have a very specific reason to do so, like you're animating some really nice text, like a title sequence or something, use text animators. I don't ever want to catch you animating the position properties on a text layer. What I mean by that is if you click P and it brings up the position property, animating text like this. The reason behind that is because if you have to make a bunch of changes to where the text is or something like that later on, it's going to be a nightmare. Let's say your client comes back and they don't like this motivational poster that you made right here and they want to move this text around. Now, if you try to grab this text and move it over here, all this stuff, it's going to start putting down new keyframes here because you, you're moving the position and it thinks you want to add new position keyframes. Okay, so what can we do that's better than this? Well, there are animators specifically for text. So what you wanna do is click on your text, drop down this little drop down here, click animate, and then you can add on all of these different options. Let's do position, okay? And I'll also add on one for opacity. So now, if we were to animate the position, we'll start down maybe 30 pixels and then go up back to zero, and I'll give it a little ease here. And let me just animate my opacity too. Now we have this little animation and it's all taking place inside of this text animator. So it's all actually happening on the text. So now if I go ahead and move this text around and click play again, there was no changes to the actual keyframes. And what's really nice is if I copy this animator and paste it on any other text layer, they will get the same animation um, applied to them, the same animator. We can move around them as well. And if we want to update the text, let's say the client wanted to say, how about eat my shorts? No problem, we can move stuff around and edit it. This is all live text with the animators applied. Now the same thing can even be applied to shape layers. This isn't always the, the best use case, but it can also be useful. So if you open up the contents here, you have a transform located on this shape layer. So let's say that you know that, for example, this triangle, you know that this triangle needs to bounce up and down like this, it's going to bounce up and down. It's like a little triangle ticker thing that's going to bounce up and down repeatedly forever. And you know that maybe this um, location might change, but it's going to do this no matter where it lives. You could just animate this on the transform on the shape part of the layer instead of the position of the layer. You see, if I click P, there are no keyframes because it's all taking place on the contents. And now if I move around this actual layer here, it's not making any new keyframes and it's taking that animation uh, relative to the layer. And I can just have that little animation go with it, which can be really nice if you don't feel like pre-composing your shape animations all the time. So bouncing off the previous tip, if you make a cool text animator or really anything for that matter, you can save it as a preset. So if I was to grab this animator here, grab the keyframes, grab the animator, you can go to animation, save this as a preset. And then later, if you wanna use it again, you can just apply it in your effects and presets. So for example, I have tons of sexy character slide-in effects like this. So what I recommend doing is making a couple text presets that you use all the time and then you can just easily apply them to projects when you just need simple text effects and this is not just text so 
I have tons of different presets. For example, things like half tones, grit overlays, camera shakes, blurs, chromatic aberration, gradients, and more. And one more part of this, you can actually have a blank After Effects structure like this, so something with a couple of folders that you like that you tell After Effects to open with every time it opens. So you just go to Edit, Preferences, it might be different on Mac, you just go to your Preferences, and then New Project. Then in here, you can just choose your project template. And in this case, I just keep this in a templates folder in my New Project folder. And then it will just reference an After Effects project with a folder structure, and that will load up every time you boot After Effects. This little tip I call animate backwards. It might seem really obvious, but it's helped me a lot. So let's say you want to animate this scene, right? This is what you want it to look like. Well, if this is what you have designed, right? This is the scene, this is your storyboard or your style frame. Well, you already pretty much have all the work done already, right? If this is what you're bringing into After Effects, make your keyframes here. Okay, if you're gonna animate this stuff coming in, you already have half of the work done already, okay? So let's make keyframes here where everything's already settled into place and then go backwards and, and work from there, okay? So we have our th things coming into screen and then we start pulling them off screen to animate. So now I can think, okay, well, this pyramid is closest to us, so it's probably going to travel the, f the furthest and fastest. So that's got to go really far off. This is middle. It's got to travel a little bit less. And then this is fur furthest. So because of parallax, it's going to travel the least. And the sun will travel the even less than that. Okay. And then I want to ease all of this stuff on this second keyframe a little bit. And it'll look something like that. All right, so if you were to not animate backwards, right, a beginner mistake would be to um, to start, make keyframes in the beginning, drag everything off screen, then go later, and then try to put everything back in place where it was and be like, oh, uh, where was this stuff again? Was it like here and was it here? And then try to redo it all. And then you have to do twice the amount of work. And nobody wants to do twice the amount of work. Certainly not me. You gotta realize the power of the pick whip. So let's say we got this moon that's going a little bit crazy and you wanna add something like a label to it. Now if you just try to pick whip this moon label to this moon, you're gonna get all of the properties, all of the animation properties of that. So it's going to get this crazy rotation and the scaling and all of this stuff. But if I wanna have just maybe just the position of it, you can open up the position of both layers and you'll have a second pick whip here. So I can pick whip this position to that position and uh, we get a little bit of overlap here, so I'm gonna open up the anchor point and just move it over a little bit like this. And now, just the positions are linked like this. And you can do this with any properties that have pick whips, you can link them to each other. So let's say I want this scale to be linked to that position. So I don't know why you'd want this, but now this scale is gonna be wiggling around according to the position of this layer. You could even do it with something like this text, this source text could be linked to the position of this layer. And now you're getting some weird data that's changing according to that. Kinda of cool, could be good for some UI or something. Now what if I undo a little bit of this and I change this instead of having all of these wiggles happening. Let me turn off these wiggles here and change this instead to just a constant rotate like this, right? And so now if I parent this layer, this text layer to the moon, it will be rotating around like this. But if I want this to orbit and I want the text to always be facing me, we could just open up both rotations like this. I could pick whip this text rotation to the moon rotation like this. And you can see uh, right when you do just like that, 
you're obviously getting the rotation from that layer, but if I just go in and I put a little negative sign in front, then it's going to cancel that out. It's gonna do the opposite of it and cancel out that rotation. And that way, if I ever go in and I change this um, rotation here, or if I was to add a plus value and then maybe add some, some keyframes like this to add a little bit of animation like this, now these are going to be always linked together, right? So we don't have to worry about um, going in and having to update the layer that is linked together with that. If you use it properly, set matte can save your life. Set matte gets a lot of hate and I think people don't understand how to use it properly and it, it can be kind of funky in a lot of cases. I'm gonna link a video um, to someone who explains it really well. I'm not gonna go super in depth about the intricacies of it, but it mostly works well on shape layers and pre-comps, anything that can be continuously rasterized. So let's say you wanna mask all of these um, mountains with this frame. In my case, it's this card layer, right? This card. Well, it would be kind of dopey to duplicate this five times and have to use an alpha mat each time like this, right? Like this and duplicate the layer and keep changing everything to an alpha mat and blah, blah, blah. And then before you know it, you have how many different layers and your workflow gets really messy and it's just not a great way to work for a scene like this. So what I really love using is an effect called set mat. So you search for set mat and then you just set your set mat layer as whatever the mat layer is. In my case, it's this background card and then it will just cut that out of your shape and you can invert it or not. And then if you're using effects on the layer, you can also select those. You have some other things in here. And then you can just copy this mat and you can apply it on anything else that needs the mat. And so now if you wanna make your little animation, remember I'm going to animate backwards and then pull everything off screen like this. And now we have a nice little animation that is clean on the timeline and it looks just as good as it would if you use alpha mat layers. All right, let me know which tip you thought was the hottest, or if you got your own hot tip, leave it in the comment. Let me know what you think. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.